Well, your boiler needs a retube. Today we're going to talk about how these things get cut. We're here with longtime boiler pressure vessel tech Glenn Lockhart, and he's just cut some tubes. And Glenn, maybe talk a little bit about when you actually cut a boiler tube. Um, how long do you actually make that in between the tube sheets? Uh, add the, we measure tube sheets, tube sheet outside to outside. And if the tubes are going to be rolled and beaded, flare rolled and beaded, you add three sixteenths on each end. Okay, uh, so a lot of the, excuse me. So once you have the three sixteenths inch. Um, you actually either either weld on that outside or you actually yes. roll, one, e yeah. either one, right? Yes. Well, if they're flare rolled and beaded, you add three sixteenths on each end. Okay. And if you're going to weld, which is common practice in the first pass, on the rear, we add an eighth on that end. Okay. All right. And then Good. those are straight rolled and welded. Okay. And that gives you the proper length of run out on each, each end of the tube sheet. Is there anything special with uh, cutting the tubes? I mean, is it, uh, you know, a special blade or anything? I mean... Well, we use a severing. 20 inch cutting wheel and that's pretty common for hand cutting the way we way we cut them right, right. Uh, it's just an abrasive wheel it's a quarter inch thick need a 20 inch one that cuts makes a better square cut okay uh, accuracy is important because it causes more labor out in the field if you don't the tube length isn't correct right and you have to either alter the tube when you get in the field or uh, hit, if you're short you're just short right so uh, a lot of times we'll get a common length and do a little work on the end, a little prep work on the end of them, grinding them back down or trimming them to get the right length to stick out that we want on each end. Okay. And then we'll start, we'll go ahead and roll the tube and right. basically they're installed at that point. Now when you're ordering the tubes and they actually come in, um, you know, I mean, if you only need a 10 foot uh, tube, let's say, um, for, the, uh, for the boiler, what, what size should you order? the tube before you actually cut it? You know, is it, is it a 20, 12 foot? Is it a 20 foot? Is it a 15 foot? Common length is 20, 22, and 24, I believe. If you're gonna use, let's say, less than 10 foot, mm -hmm. it would make sense to order a 20 foot length, and then you cut each tube twice, and it's cheaper as cost per foot. Okay. You have less, less up front cost on the tube. And sure. you, they can order them cut to length if you want. Right. But you're taking a chance on that with Warpage on the tube sheets and a lot of boilers, you know, if you're retubing the boiler, it's probably 10, maybe 12, 15 years old. Right. There's a good possibility that the tube sheets aren't square any longer. And mm -hmm. There's actually, this boiler we're doing, we had three different measurements on length. Okay. And uh, we have a device we're going to trim them with once they're in the boiler. Right. Okay. So, well, maybe talk a little bit about the tube real quick, Glenn. Uh, the tube. What's the difference in a tube and, and a pipe, a piece of pipe? Okay, the uh, difference between boiler tubes are a specific item. They are manufactured specifically for boilers. So they're mm -hmm. a certain type of material. Usually that material and stuff should be visible on the tube. Mm -hmm. It'll tell you the diameter and the wall thickness of the tube, or the MWs, the mill wall. Okay. They vary from 95 thousandths up to uh, 135 is a common. Okay. Most common for what we do is a 105 wall. 105, uh-huh. Uh, as this pipe is measured by the inside diameter okay and that and pipes are a completely different animal right this is a uh, boiler tubing is specific to boiler tubes mm -hmm. and there's hundreds of different types of boiler tubes right right and, and as far as uh, the actual integrity of the pipe itself there's no seam in, in, a, in a tube not a visible seam no. right no. no visible seam right no, okay. there is a these are I can find it on here. ERWS was electric welded, electric resistance welded steel. Right. Which means it's folded and it does have a it does have a seam, but it's basically not visible. Not visible. In faint areas, you can see that there is a seam in them. Right. Right. Okay. Well, after you cut it, um, we obviously have to uh, clean it up a little bit. Uh, why don't you show us a little bit about how to do that? At, on the, after the tube sawed, it is an abrasive saw. It does leave a little bit of a, I don't know if you could call it a, a flitching or debris or a burr that's left behind by the saw. You have to watch that pretty carefully. It will cut you. So what we do is take a basic half round rough bastard file, 
and file the end of the tube off. Just not doing real well at it, evidently. Clean the outside and then you can it's an alternate method. Clean each tube that way and get the burrs off of it. Okay. Makes it a lot better when you go to roll the tube because you don't want that stuff getting in the rolls. The tube oh. rolls are real expensive and it, it will lock the rolls up or it just makes them really dirty and they don't want to take up when you start rolling the tube. Right. Uh, there's another way you can do it when when they're in the boiler we can slide them out and take a flap wheel and a grinder and die grinder and go around and clean that off that well as well. That okay. way as well. If that's it's kind of a couple different ways of doing it. All right, well, pretty much it. Awesome, awesome. Well, Glenn, we appreciate you coming by, man, and Thank uh, you. appreciate all your work. And it's good to get out here sometimes with these guys that are getting their hands dirty and really have this a lot of knowledge. This stuff is not stump, something that you know people just pick up and do in a year. This is a lot of years of experience, and uh, these guys really have a have a have a tough job out here. So uh, appreciate you hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Boiling Point. Thank you. Well, we appreciate Glenn stopping by with us and uh, cutting some tubes, telling us a little bit about the boiler business and the tube business. Um, make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, subscribe to that YouTube page. And also, make sure you check out that boilerwarehouse.com. We appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.